Hey Instagram! I know this is not your typical live video if you're new around here. Every now and then, when I feel like God is really pressing something on my heart, um, I do a live video called Tainer Time, which is like retainer talk. Um, because who doesn't want to see people in their retainer, right? Like, come on, let's all be real around here. But more importantly, I just feel like it kind of humbles me, um, it keeps me humble, and it also uh, reminds me that this whole journey, why I started this page, um, is so not about me, and it's not about, um, you know, any kind of engagement or followers or anything like that. It's all about God um, and the ministry that he's doing. Hey, Casey! The ministry he's doing just kind of through me and what he's teaching me and um, just my team and all that kind of stuff. So I wanted to take a moment and talk to you guys about something that kind of expands a little bit more on the post that I put up just now on Instagram talking about contentment because I think that's something that's been stirring in my heart this weekend. And I've had a really tough weekend. As you guys saw, Like I just have felt um, like my emotions have been all over the place with um, wanting a baby. And um, so it's been hard for me. It's been hard to to process those emotions. I've had a lot of tears this weekend, which I'm not like a big, I don't know, am I a big crier? Do I cry a lot? Yeah. <laughs> he just said yes. <laughs> okay, maybe I am an emotional person, who knows? But um, it has been an emotional weekend for me and I've just been crying a lot about just wanting a baby and just the pain of feeling like, what is God doing? Like, obviously he is stopping this. Um, and for those of you guys that are new, this is called retainer time. We sit in our retainers and we have girl chat. Um, so anyways, I we were having you know a heart to heart last night, me and my husband, and I was just crying, crying a lot because I just felt like I don't know how long I can do this. I don't know how long I can go for. Um, and it's really interesting because a lot of these emotions I'm feeling are very similar to how I felt when I was waiting for my husband, you know, when I was single and I was like, Lord, what the heck is going on? Why is this desire taking so long? in you know in my in this life and like why am I having to wait for so long and why do I see all my other friends getting everything that they want and I feel like you know I'm Madison I love you too <laughs> why do I feel like I am not getting the desires of my heart met and I see everybody else getting what they want right like I'm just, I know there's a lot of single women who follow me too and feel that uh, connection to what I felt back then waiting for a husband and I just felt so frustrated with God. And so a lot of these emotions that I'm feeling again are feelings that I had when I was waiting for my husband. And so it's been really interesting to kind of process through it almost like a second round for something new. Um, and so it's kind of just brought me back to this whole thing that I truly believe that God needs to get us to a place of submission of his will in order for him to give us the blessing. Like, I think for me, I, w I have not been okay with the picture of our life if it did not include a baby. Um, and that's something where I think that he wants to get us to that place. And so I've been kind of processing, like racking my brain. What did I go through when I was waiting for Josh and how did I how can I take those lessons I learned and apply them to what this waiting for baby? Um, and so I kind of want to walk you guys through that. So basically when I was waiting for Josh, I, I didn't really date around very much, but like, you know, I was always kind of like, you know, you're at church and you're like, Oh, Hey, like who's that over there? And like, Oh, maybe that's my future husband. Um, and you start going down this rabbit hole with every guy that's good looking that possibly could love Jesus. And you're like, okay, surely this could be the one. And then I realized something that I had to do was kind of remove that desire almost from my heart in order for God to fulfill it. And so I took a step back and I said, Lord, I'm no longer looking for my husband. I'm no longer going to be pursuing it. I'm no longer going to be like kind of throwing myself in like, not that I threw myself at guys, but I would like kind of set up situations. So I was like, oh, maybe I'll come across him here. Or maybe I'll come across him here. Or if I knew a guy would be at a certain place, I'd be like, well, maybe I'll just like happen to be there too, you know? Um, trying to put myself in someone's, I guess, journey so that maybe that would be the one, right? 
And so when I was going through this, it came to a point where I said, Lord, I'm done. I'm done seeking a husband. I'm done seeking, um, you know, a guy. I'm done looking. I am just done with this. I'm done dating. It was kind of just a, a time where I stopped. I was like, we're done. And you know what? I started praying like, I am okay if that is not what you have for me. And I'm also going to be okay with and pray forward that my husband will see me first and that my husband will pursue me and that my husband will come after me. And that was really when things started to change. And it was right when, right before Josh came into my life was when I made those commitments to the Lord. And I just basically laid down my will and I accepted his, um, God's will. And that was really, really transformative, not only for my heart, but also for my mind, because I felt like for the first time I was in a healthy position where when Josh came into my life, I was able to, to like be emotionally stable as a girl through the whole like pursuing process. Like we talk about all the time, like in our dating situation, there was never like this up and down of emotions. I never was like, oh my gosh, does he like me? I don't know. Like I can't tell. What do you think? You know, I never went up and down, up and down. It was very like just intentional and it was very, um, God ordained from the beginning. And I think a lot of that became because I chose to say, I'm done with this and the Lord is going to bring him to me and the Lord is going to put me in his path. I'm not going to have to seek it out. I'm not going to have to try to manipulate events or manipulate conversation or try to push something, the, the relationship conversation or any of that stuff. Um, and it really came down to a heart perspective and position of contentment. Um, and so that's what I kind of want to share with you guys tonight because I'm going through the same thing with waiting for a baby. And who would have thought, like, literally, I thought if you would have asked me like a couple years ago when I was waiting for Josh, I would have been like, um, yeah, I'm not going to be waiting for a baby because I waited for a husband. Lord knows that we've already punched that ticket. I don't need to do it again. But here I am waiting again in another season of life. And so I want to encourage you guys, if you don't know, if you don't learn to wait well now and be content with what you have right now, you will never be content when that thing comes. When Josh came into my life, guess what? I'm sure I could have convinced myself, I'll be so happy, I'll be so content, I'll never want anything ever again in my life. False, I want a baby now, right? So now that I want a baby, that means that if I had put all of my like joy and satisfaction and fulfillment in Josh coming into my life, then that would have been very disappointing because guess what? Now I want a baby. So that really didn't fulfill me. And so I kind of want to just like share with you guys on that end of things that if you don't learn to be content with where you're at right now, with what God's given you today, with the story and the journey and the people he's got you around and the community and the environment and the job and the paycheck and where he has you today, it will be very difficult, almost impossible to enjoy and fully be grateful for what he wants to give you tomorrow. And for me personally, I have just been soaking in Philippians 4, um, where I memorized this a long time ago when I was a girl, um, just a girl, <laughs> I'm a girl now, but when I was a little kid, <laughs> it's Philippians 4, it says, um, not that I am speaking of being in need, for I've learned in every situation I am to be content. I know what it is to have little and I know what it is to have abundance in every circumstance. I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger and abundance and need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so for Josh and I, you know, we had a lot of conversations and I think right now, um, we just came to a place where we have decided that IVF is not something we're going to pursue right now or um, that we're going to be pursuing any time in the future. Um, and I think both of us just don't have peace about that right now. Um, we, oh, that's okay, Emily. You can laugh all you want. It's kind of funny that I'm in my retainer. I think it's funny. I can laugh at myself. Humility, right, guys? That's important. Um, but... We've, we've chosen to take that off the table and I was kind of relying on that. Like in the back of my mind, I was like, it's okay if we don't get pregnant this year. Like we're totally going to pursue IVF next summer, which it was almost like this safety net. Like if God doesn't come through here in this miracle, when I'm expecting him to come through, then I've got this safety net over here where science and, you know, I can take some action and I can have more control of the outcome and get the desired outcome that I want. And I just didn't realize that how like 
how much I was trying to manipulate through that process the will that God might, God might have for us. And I've been focused on this concept of God is, he wants to give to us, right? But sometimes as humans, we focus so much on the getting aspect, like I need to get a baby, I need to get a husband, I need to get this job, I need to get this paycheck and this house, and I need to get, 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 that we forget that God wants to give to us. And so when we're so consumed with getting, we lose sight that when, and we lose, we lose the opportunity, our hands are so focused and our mind is so focused and our heart is so focused on getting something that we don't have space or we're not paying attention to what God wants to give us. And I want what God wants to give me. Like my husband, if I had married anyone else, like I love our marriage. I love our relationship. I love him so much. He is so perfect for me. I had no clue what I needed and God did and he delivered above and beyond like and I learned that every single day I learned something new where I'm like God wow you knew exactly what you were doing when you saved Josh for me and when you saved me for Josh and I want that like even if that means I have to wait longer even if that means that I um, have to be patient and it's hard and it makes me want to cry and I break down all the time I want that I want what God has for me and so I think it's important I guess just what I want to say is that you know, I want to speak on the contentment piece. Right now, I'm choosing to not focus on getting a baby. I'm choosing to focus on being thankful for the marriage and the little family of two that we have today because I know that if I can be content with that and I can have thankfulness in my heart for that, I know that God will give me more. He says that in the Bible, like when you are faithful with little things, I will give you more. And so... I want to pursue that. You guys with me? Like, I want to pursue that together as a community, as individuals, as people in our, um, you know, whatever environment we're in, whether we're a student, work, relationship, let's pursue contentment right now, right here, where we're at today, with what we look like, with who we are on our health and fitness journey, with who we are in our business, with who we are with our incomes and with our houses and with our lifestyles and our relationships. And then let's say, thank you, Lord. Let's say, thank you for that. And then let's open up our hands and say, what do you want to give me? Because maybe he doesn't even want to give you what you're asking for. Maybe he wants to give you something better or something that you didn't even know you needed. Like there's been times where Josh and I have talked about a baby and he's like, Court, maybe God is withholding that because he is doing something incredible with your business and you wouldn't be able to serve in that capacity at that level with also a brand new baby. And I'm like, wow, like I have a huge desire in my business to be, to help other women retire from their full-time jobs. And I have a huge desire in my business to build it to um, a place where we don't have to worry about finances. Like Josh can retire from basketball if he wants to, but that doesn't require, like that's not like hobby time. That requires a full-time focus. And I know that that desire in my heart is also strong. And so maybe that God's like, Court, I want to give this to you, but you're so focused on getting this, which will come later. But if you would just take your eyes off that and put them on me and be grateful for where you're at, I can give you this other desire of your heart. And it will be so beautiful and it will be so perfect. And you'll be so thankful that I chose to give you that then. And then I can come through with the other thing, right? So anyways, that's just kind of, I wanted to expand, like, I feel like captions on Instagram are just not long enough. Like, I am a chatty Kathy. (laughs) You guys probably know that. You follow me and you're like, yeah, you write long captions. So sometimes I want to come on live and have a heart to heart with you. What's up, baby? My husband just joined. Cute little thing. He's in bed next to me. Um, but sometimes we just need to be reminded, you know, I I needed to be reminded of this, like, and, and that's what I did today. Josh and I, it's a Monday because of my, thankfully because of my business and because of my flexible schedule, I got to take the day off. Josh and I had the day, Josh had the day off, which was amazing. A Monday took the day off. We went to the park. We threw, like I bought at the Dollar Tree, these like, you know, those like sticky, like hand things and then you like have like a velcro ball that you throw and we did that and we played catch in the park so simple we had the country music on it was a beautiful day and I just you know both of us were just like let's focus on being so happy and content and thankful with 
who we are as a family right now and who's to say a family of two is not complete? Who's to say you as a single woman is not complete? God completes everything. Like God in us completes who we are as an individual and as a couple and as a family. So whatever you're seeking, God already can fulfill that need and that desire in your heart. I know I would love to get a puppy, Hannah, but we we tried that actually and it didn't work with our lifestyle. We move around way too much um, and it get, it gets really expensive to like take a puppy and like Japan specifically has like a really long um, quarantine situation so it wouldn't work here but um, but yeah it just want to encourage you guys with that and leave you that with your Monday message of the day share it with a friend if you want to but at the end of the day I think it's so important to be so grateful and to be so happy with what you have today so if you're single being so happy with where you're at today because I promise you when you get married your dreams will not all come true I promise you you will still feel insecure I promise you you will still feel alone at times I promise you that Everything will not be solved by just getting married. So be happy and grateful with where you're at today. And then, I, and then because you're in that position, your marriage is going to be so enriched because of your heart of gratitude and your heart of joy. Like that's a blessing to a husband. So if you're a person that's like constantly worrying and focusing on getting more and getting the next step and getting this and getting that, guess what? Like for a husband, that's going to feel like there's con like it's never enough. And I don't want my husband to feel like that. I want my husband to be like, dang, she's always happy. She is always joyful. She is always excited and optimistic and just content with where we're at in life. And that's a wife I want to have in my home. You know what I mean? So let's be that kind of single woman. And if you're out there like me waiting for a baby, let's be the kind of wives that are happy and thankful and grateful that we are married and in this position of marriage life and in this season and we are taking full advantage of that like no baby lifestyle where we can get up and go and do whatever and play in the park and just be you too and soak that in because I promise you and I both, we're, I'm speaking to myself as much as to you, that when we get that baby, it's not going to end all of our problems. We're still going to feel insecure. We're still going to feel alone at times. We're still going to feel like, you know, overwhelmed and like maybe, you know, at times we might even think like, man, life might have been easier when we didn't have a baby. <laughs> So I think we should just stop trying to get to that next stage and just focus so much on, Lord, thank you. Thank you for where I'm at today. Thank you that I am here in this marriage season and for however long you want us to be here, even if that means you never bring a baby, you never open my womb. Thank you. Thank you for this. That is such a more enjoyable approach to life than anything else. So I hope you guys have an awesome Monday. I hope you guys rock out. Um, you rock out your day today and whatever goals that you're chasing, goals are awesome. I have huge goals. I'm chasing them too. And of course I still desire to be a mom, but at the end of the day, let's be grateful. Like every step of the way, we're chasing those goals with gratefulness. We're chasing those goals with joy. We're chasing those goals with contentment. Lord, where you have me today is awesome. But let's keep moving forward. Let's keep pursuing, you know, your kingdom and building your kingdom up and um, and the community up around you. So go bring joy into the life of everyone that you touch and everyone that you come and encounter with this uh, Monday. And I hope you guys have an awesome day. Thanks for joining me with Retainer Talk. Um, and again, that was the verse that I read was in Philippians 4 um, and it was 11 through 14. Solid, solid verse on contentment. Um, but anyways, that was just a little bit of an expansion on my post earlier today. Um, and I'll post some videos of our, our bar, of our time at the park because I am an athletic, I just want to clarify, I am an athletic person, okay? This video, I do not look athletic. But I am athletic, so please don't judge me based off this video. I promise you I'm super, super athletic. I don't look like it, but that's okay. Everyone has their moments where they don't shine, okay? Have an awesome Monday, you guys. Bye.